Well, I've made a video about the fifth tier of Scottish football. So now, no league is too niche to cover. Here are the NPL Victoria grounds. Paisley Park Soccer Complex, Altona Magic. As you can see, the grounds in this league are mostly quite modest. It is semi-professional after all. The one and only stand at this ground is really just a shelter with not even terracing underneath, just some sloping tarmac. It does the job I suppose, but personally, I sometimes suffer from tight calves. I just worry about that downward slope, you know? Avenger Park, Avondale FC. I suppose it's fitting that Melbourne, a city that was founded by Batman, has a stadium called Avenger Park and another called Marvel Stadium. Yes, I know Batman isn't a Marvel character, but neither are the Powerpuff Girls, and I'm pretty sure they're part of the Avengers. Anyway, this ground probably doesn't match the quality of Marvel Stadium, but it seems like a decent little venue. Kingston Heath Soccer Complex, Bentley Greens. Fans of golf might recognize the name Kingston Heath, due to the adjacent golf course, which is one of the more prestigious in Australia. It kind of looks like the green keepers from the golf course are responsible for this ground as well. And they've raked the field as they would a bunker. This is somewhat similar to the last one, but backing onto a golf course rather than a freeway makes for a slightly more serene setting. George Andrews Reserve, Dandenong Thunder. As you may have been able to gather from the double-headed eagle on the club's crest, this club was formed by members of the Albanian community, who are largely concentrated in Dandenong. There's even a park named after the Albanian village where most of the club's founding members were from, Keshavar, which is actually in North Macedonia, a country that has a large Albanian population. That's why in Skopje, the country's capital, you see the Latin and the Cyrillic alphabets used on signage throughout the city. <clears throat> That was weird. But yeah, most of the clubs in this league were founded by immigrant communities, mostly from Balkan countries. Green Gully Reserve, Green Gully SC. Green Gully's ground, Green Gully Reserve, is situated right next to its namesake geographical feature, which is this Green Gully. Yes, power pylons count as greenery. Koalas can live off them as well. Speaking of greenery, most of this stadium's capacity is coming from the grass embankment that borders three sides of the field, where people stand rather than sit because a Melbourne winter is not the type of weather that Australia is typically known for. It gets a wee bit soggy. Olympic Park, Heidelberg United. A long time ago when the world was black and white, Melbourne hosted the Olympics. This complex was built for those games as a training facility. No, the world wasn't actually black and white, but TV was. And those Olympics coincided with the launch of television in Australia, just two or three decades after the US. For a long time, this ground had a running track, as you might expect from an Olympics training facility, but it has since been redeveloped into a rectangular stadium. That includes a grandstand that runs the length of the pitch, a rarity in this league, John Ilhan Reserve, Hume City. Hume City was founded by Turkish immigrants, and this is named after a Turkish immigrant. The late founder of Crazy John's, a mobile phone retailer. I believe my first phone was purchased from Crazy John's. It's one of the newer grounds in the league, and so, although there is just one tiny stand, it's a modern one. Knight Stadium is home to the Melbourne Knights who participated in Australia's former first tier known as the National Soccer League. The main stand of this ground is named after Mark Viduka, who played for the club before going on to Captain Australia. The rest of the field is surrounded by terracing, which has seen better days. I suppose this stadium is a good reflection of the club's history. They used to be bigger, so the capacity is big, but they're not anymore, so it's not in good condition. It's still one of the more interesting grounds in the league for sure. Campbell Reserve, Moreland City. This is about as basic as it gets, which makes sense given that this club has spent most of its history in the lower leagues and was 
only promoted to the top tier of the MPL after last season. Not much else to say. Alcho Park, North Geelong Warriors. This is certainly the most rural setting we've seen so far. In fact, it's the only ground in the league that isn't in Melbourne itself. Give it a couple of decades, I reckon. This ground is another one-stand wonder, but I do always appreciate a tree-lined perimeter. It helps reduce wind and looks pretty good. Jack Edwards Reserve, Oakley Cannons. In case you were wondering, it's not named after the New South Wales cricketer. But that should have been really quite obvious. Once again, this follows the same formula as most of the other grounds. However, there's no complaints from me. Basically, all the spectators can sit comfortably and out of the rain in these blue bucket seats. SS Anderson Reserve, Port Melbourne Sharks. Not only is a team based right by a port being called the Sharks a good fit, but I assume SS Anderson is the name of a ship. And ships and ports go together like a duck to water. Or indeed, a ship to water. I'm rambling about nonsense because once more it's a pretty basic beach of a stadium. Lakeside Stadium, South Melbourne FC, another participant in the now defunct National Soccer League. This venue has an interesting history, starting out as a cricket ground in the late 1800s, rising to prominence as an Australian rules football ground, and now after a renovation it's home to one of Australia's more popular football clubs outside of the A-League, as well as Athletics Victoria. It's situated in a great spot by the lake as you might expect given its name. There are also plenty of palm trees about the place and a lovely view of the city. But perhaps my favourite aspect to this stadium is how some of the buildings from the old days have been preserved. If you do plan on visiting this ground though, be aware that occasionally a group of funny looking cars race around the lake and make a lot of noise. I think I saw one of the drivers drink champagne from his shoe. Absolute savages. Churchill Reserve. Speaking of wine, there's a wine brand called Churchill's Reserve. St Alban Saints. This is another club crest that gives away the club's origins. It's basically the same as Dinamo Zagreb's, who are Croatia's biggest club. They might have a bigger and perhaps better stadium than St Albans, but at least St Albans can claim to have a ground that was purpose-built for football, so... So there you have it. It wasn't too hard to pick a favourite this time around, despite the fact that it's the only ground that has a running track around it. Lakeside Stadium is just a cut above. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing and as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.